Hello and welcome in today's video. Today we are talking about how I made the track hide using just one sample for inspiration. I hope you enjoy and don't forget to subscribe and if you have any questions ask in the comments. Enjoy. So here we are. As you can see my mixer is already opened on the left screen and my door is already open on the right screen. So now we talk about how I got inspiration from one loop and I created the track hide around it. Now the first thing I want to say that nothing here is product placement. I just bought everything and I honestly and I say some things I like and some things I don't like but I don't like anything so it's fine. Um, now we start here because I got the first idea from Aeon. Now Aeon is uh, writ is there are two types of Aeon. It's uh, loop uh, loops, what's called rhythmic, rhythmic, and we have melodic. Now I bought uh, rhythmic because I have enough synthesizers making leads and something, and I just wanted to have something for the lower end, and I just want to press a button and I get a loop without making thoughts about it. So it's just saving time when you want to be creative. Now, the first thing what helped me creating the track was that sound. Just listen. So you got me. You have these pushing half note, a full note. So that was the thing what I heard first when just pressing weird and weird keys on the keyboard. Now, the second thing I used here was the Aperture Orchestra by Spitfire Audio and I loaded the Colonia section. When we talk about loading, I want to share with you directly one tip what's especially useful because as you can see here, I just used, blah, I just used um, one single thing and it's just the notes C sharp one and C sharp two, which is exactly an, uh, an octave above. And it's all Colenio, which sounds like this here. Now, the trick is, if I just need Colenio and these two notes, what I do now is purge all samples and I have memory zero and now I play it again. And you can see we are about 2.8 megabytes. This saves you a lot of RAM. Just purge all the samples. Everything you need, he's going, he's taken back into the RAM, but he's uh, disabling everything else, like the long notes, uh, what we have, the tight and shorts, and now everything I click and play, he's uh, using that into the RAM. But for now, we just have Colenio and saving some memory. Now, that is the thing, because I felt this... You know, that rhythm works for me in that section. That's why I brought it in. Now, to f make a crossover between the first section where this rhythm is going on and the second thing, I always use a Piotti for some scenes like this. And the Piotti is here. It's always a good choice to use. And uh, now the second thing what happen, what helps us is the synthy here. Uh, I just uh, so unsolo everything and just solo that. This is something like a cutoff which comes from and again. This uh, gives a nice color, and it's making everything a little bit more interesting. Now to talk about synthesizers, we have the massive X here. No, it's the absinthe. I'm sorry, I just named that wrong. To confuse myself, um, we have the absinthe, what makes this sound. In combination with the first one, it's just for adding depth. To push that a little for, uh, forward. Now, the next thing is I will play the start, and what you will notice is the huge percussion sound here. I'll just listen. And the crossover. Now, uh, all always a go-to thing is rise and hit, um, because they have. First of all, you have a huge load of every thing. You have orchestral, hybrid, percussive into the void, which is a very crazy thing. 
lifter, smooth swoosh saps, and you can build your own things. Jeez, I need one hour to talk about that plugin. It's crazy. But for now, I just used, uh, what is it? Uh, Dirty Race. Which has this kind of hyperspace uh, sound. And it leads into that next section. So, it's something like, it pushes you somewhere. And, of course, I want to talk about the Tycos. Jesus. Uh, we have Damage 2 here. Uh, one big benefit, I think, what Damage 2 has is that Damage 2 um, gives you more creative space than in Damage 1. Because, for me, Damage 1 is a, a perfect thing for making loops. Because Damage 1 is so versatile in making loops. But the single sounds, are, of course, like, damaged sounds are super nice. But Damage 2 has the folk for me the focus more on 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 instruments not just breaking things uh, breaking things you have the focus on 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 nice sounding things you also have the damage thing where it's crackling windows and it's crushing metal and, and everything but damage 2 also have uh, a huge taiko sample drum sample snare drum sample and you can really play with all these instruments now just solo uh, this one here this I, I really love Tycos and I use them in all almost every project when I need percussion. Tycos are a super, super cool thing to have. Now, next section. Let's just take this and we say one is our crossover point. Now we go to the next section. What we directly hear is that loop. That loop is from Damage 1 because I like it for uh, making loops. And... I don't know if you can hear it, but the loop itself has the same kind of structure. No, you can't hear it now, but the, the this percussion loop has the same structure as the loop I will show you now. Remember. So, now the loop, the main loop, is also an Aeon loop, it's that one. And I like this cutoff. This is amazing. This is something... This sounds like a bad guy is going into the room and he's searching for you. It's, it's, it's grabbing you here and it's saying, give me my money. Now, next thing we combine the percussion and the Aeon. And... Of course, we have the Colonia strings, which sounds like this. An FX, an FX, an FX, an, an FX, uh, I call it one. This is uh, Spitfire Studio strings FX section, and it's something like a rip for the strings. Just something weird, what I normally don't like to hear, but it gives this this kind of 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 what? That's, that's the intention behind it. Now, the next thing, Hans Zimmer. Brasses, big, huge brasses. Now let's solo that section. What we hear is a bass trumpet with horns. And to make everything more beautiful. That is the thing. I don't start it with the bass trumpet. I started with the orchestral thing, which is, by the way, again, the aperture. But now we have, again, we can purge everything. We can purge it. And we just play it again. It works. Now, that saves a lot of RAM, but I have enough. Now, the first big benefit when you have... When you need something like depth and uh, uh, or, or full sound overall, is to work with that orchestra because, of course, you can uh, load every sample at once and mix them in in sound and everything and mix them in in volume. But if I would load now the tubas, the bass trombones, the trombones, the bass trumpets, the trumpets, and everything else, it was so many um, tracks and it's. It needs a lot of time, and if I if I just want to make an idea, I load well, I load a plugin where the whole orchestra is incomplete, 
and it sounds good. The second thing I did was was using Forzo. Um, Forzo is a go-to library when you need something airy, a huge airy thing. For me, the Spitfire plugins, especially the horns, are the best ones out there because you have a super clean tone. What the what the horns are about? Now I'll show you what I mean. This is a weird um, uh, dynamic and expression thing here, but it sounds nice overall for me. But you really feel the instrument. And Forzo has its benefit. When you need something airy. Now, let's just play the whole brass section at once. Okay, what you hear right now was a rip and one of the main reasons I bought a Spitfire plugin because I love rips. You can use them everywhere in action, okay, not in comedy and romantic stuff, but um, in mostly all the genres where something is action or, or a drama or like a shock moment or something, you can use the rips. Now, a rip is basically... A run up, a quick run up with an ex like an exploding expression, combined with the affix uh, here from the strings. This leads into the next part. This is something like "ooh, careful!" and bam, the next part comes in. Now we have the second rise of also something like a hyperspace, but. The first thing is the second rise doesn't have these 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 sub bass, and the second one doesn't sound so distorted like the first one. It doesn't sound as distorted as the first one. Um, and and there we are. You have the crossover where you can hear another loop um, of uh, of damage, of course. And now let me do the following thing. I'll show you the damage loop first. Something I like on damage plugins really is their uh, their damage wheel. I think the damage wheel is a really cool thing what you have here. Because you can just turn them up. It's like a huge crazy compressor. <laughs> but I really like it. Now, this is the base thing. It's, it's mangled pop and gives you these Of course we have the aperture And the Aeon of course But for me there is something There's something missing Now I started adding guitars it Sounds like this I make it loud first, you can hear clearly what they do. And they have also a kind of crazy equalizing um, because I really pushed the lows a bit but cut them up to 100 hertz because I really want to focus uh, the bass on the synthesizers to not get this muddy thing. Um, and that's why it's just a little, it's a 1 dB boost a bit to get the, a, a bit uh, tightness. But everything lower than 100 hertz is away on both guitars, left and right. The same. I just used another one because here we uh, have a high pass filter, but the 50 uh, frequency is boot is uh, is cut it off, which gives something like uh, this here. And if I if we listen to them both here. It sounds really horrible if you listen without a context. And now let me just mix them.
it, it just shall fill the gap. Not that you can clearly hear, oh, this is a guitar, this is a guitar, what is it for kind of an amp? It's just to fill the gap here and that it doesn't sound uh, uh, like a hole or something. Now, you got me. We have about 52 seconds of music and all started by just using the Aeon thing. Just listening to the Aeon loop on the start and the end effect is something like a story. Now, let me let me tell you about it. So, I had in mind, as I told you, something, some bad boy thing. Now, this is a bad boy is coming up straight the floor onto your direction. It's coming to you. And he's been presented with a nice suit, something like John Wick. And he's on the way searching for you. Now you saw him. And you just try to get away. You just hide. You run. Get away. That's where these these whoop, uh, rip is coming in. Now, something crazy happens. Some action thing happens. The next thing, he's uh, pulling out his gun and he's aiming at you. So he wants to kill you. That's the next thing. The shooting is going on. He's running. And you are running. Both are running. And... This is just something like an action thing. A quick kind of chasing scene, but it really... It really started from one loop. So, I hope this was a bit helpful to how or where in, uh, just pressing little weird uh, notes on your keyboard can lead to. Um, and if you have any questions about it, or about the plugins or something else, just feel free to ask in the comments and just write a message. And I'm, I would love to help you out. So far, I hope you stay safe and Christmas is hitting us soon. So I wish you a Merry Christmas and I hope to see you again. Thank you for watching.